Welcome back to Sam and Ham. This is Sam. And this is Ham. And what are we doing today? Today we are delving into Velve. What's that? This is the first map in the Out of the Abyss campaign, and we have recreated it in Minecraft. Ah, so that thing that you constantly talk about not wanting spoilers for, you're going to spoil it for everyone by giving them a tour of it in Minecraft? The first map, yeah. Oh, just the first map? Just the first one. What about the other map? Eh, no spoilers for that one. Ah, I see. So, what do you say we do a guided tour here? Okay, where do we start? So, we're going to start here in the slave pen, because this is where a player character would start the campaign. And so, you'll notice that it's pretty dark. It's it's in the Underdark, because mm -hmm. that's where this whole campaign takes place. Mm -hmm. So, for parts of this video, we're going to have just the really dim lighting, because this is what it would look like to all the player characters, and but that doesn't make for a good video, so... Brightness! Okay. So, first, the slave pens. Okay. With all of our wonderfully crafted slaves. Can't can't you tell this is Topsy and Turvy? I, I don't know who they are. They're Spurf Neblin twins. Oh, and, and can't can't you tell this is a Boopado? A Bupado? The Darrow? Crazy dwarf man? He he looks like a dwarf, yes. This is the uh, Eldith Feldron, the uh you know Dwarven chick. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is Serith. Uh, he's a, he's a drow, clearly. Uh huh. Oh, and you can't forget Prince Darendil. Look at him. What? Who is Prince Darendil? He's a sun elf turned Quagoth. You tell me that doesn't look like a Quagoth? I don't know what a Quagoth looks like. This is Ront. He's an orc. Ah, green. I understand. Yeah, he's green. green. But what green. about that guy? Oh, that's he's st also green. That's stool. 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 He's a mushroom man. He's a myconid. Hi, Stool. Uh-huh. Oh, he doesn't even have a body! <laughs> this is J Jim Jar? <laughs> what happened to Jim Jar? He's short. <laughs> he's- uh, the dwarf is short, at least he's got a body! That's fine. <laughs> Bye, Jim- Oh, and this is- this is Shushar the Awakened. Uh-huh, what's the- what's- what's about the Awakened? He's a Kuatoa. He's- but he's- he's the only sane Kuatoa. <laughs> I don't want to know. But as you can see, it's it's pretty dim in here. It's pretty dark. This is where the players will start the campaign and hopefully meet some new friends and break out. So so you're going to be friends with all these guys in here? Well, some of them. Some are dicks. Ah, uh, I see. So. Okay, so we break, break out of the pen and what happens? So you can have two options. You can either cross this rickety bridge uh -huh. heading to a stalactite. Uh huh. Or over here to the right. I see. Or we can find the the vicious Quagoth den. Ah, they look very vicious. <laughs> yes, they're they're surrounded by bones. I don't even know why I bothered putting signs here. You I... can you couldn't tell me you could look at this and not know it was a Quagoth. I think it's an Ender Dragon, actually. Nah. But there's also two Drow guards kind of sitting here at their little table. Uh, what are they doing at this table? Uh, I think playing cards or, or something similar to pass the time. Ah. Uh, they're just chilling. Oh. Down below, you'll notice that... I'm dying slowly. But the uh, giant webs kind of separating you from the cavern floor. Which okay. we will get there eventually. Work our way down. Okay. We eventually... We come across... Because... I mean, your options are either down or across here eventually. To number 10 this stalactite watch post, which inside you can find two drow and a drow elite warrior. Oh, terrifying. Kind of chilling around a little table. They have no faces. They don't need faces. They don't need faces? No. Up top, an armory. Ah, so you have to fight them bare knuckle boxing, and then you get your weapons. There's a reason there's like ten slaves. Ah. Uh, in our, uh, module, that dwarven chick, mm -hmm. she went out like a champ. That's unfortunate. But here's an armory where the players can restock. Oh, clearly this is a bag of caltrops. A lot of armor and weapons and rope. Lots of arrows. All kinds of fun good stuff to at least get everybody the bare necessities to oh. fight further. Looks good. Looks good. What happens if you go this way? Continuing along. Again, because your options are either down <laughs> or this way. 
Uh, You'll find this little waterfall uh -huh. with a bunch of barrels here where the Quagoths collect water. The Quagoths collect the water? Yeah. So they're smart beings. Well, they're stupid, but they're smart enough. Yes, they're sentient. Gotcha. So the Quagoths are doing the work. Yeah, they do the manual labor. Well, a drow wouldn't do it. The drow would not sully their hands with manual labor. That's what the slaves and Quagoths are for. I see. I see. So you're not just food for the Quagoth. No, no, no. So you'll see there's a little, like, outcropping here that you can use to spy on the stuff for going on further down. Uh-huh. There's also this. That's terrifying. Yes. I choose life, actually. Um... Or death by spiders, and I hate spiders. Well, you're about to find death by spider. So, ah. in here, room six, is the shrine to Lolf. And I'm not going to give away all the surprises as to what happens in this room, but there's this big shrine to Lolf in the middle, a giant pile of pillows at the far end. Pillows? Yeah. Uh, I can guess what happens in this room. Spiders. No, they take a lot of naps, because those are pillows. Yes, of course. Nothing else bad happens here. It's nap time. It's comfy. But as you can tell by the wonderfully decorated floor, there's a bunch of web-shaped decorations. Uh -huh. uh, you can run into some bad guys here. As you head further down, it stays dark, and you end up in the priestess's study. Ah, The lovely. head priestess. Which, she has all kinds of good loot, as well as the player's previous possessions. Huh. Good, good. That means I get my loot back. Because you're a bard. I'm always a bard. I knew it. And down here is room eight. This is like the head, uh, head guard's room, because he's right below the priestess. Uh-huh. He's got blue liqueur. Yum. Uh, as well as just a pretty bare room, but yeah, he's got, he's got some pretty good loot. If you players can manage to get down here, there's like a hundred gold worth of stuff here. Gotcha. I think it's interesting that he's underneath the, the priestess's uh, chambers to guard her, but, uh, you know, she's kind of open to the to the outside here. Yeah, well, I think the idea is he's always nearby. Mm. Interesting. All right, so if we decide to go uh, interact with these sneaky yeah. friends over here. So, again, uh, options are either down or here. In here, room four, is the elite barracks. Which, oh. there, there's some dudes in here, potentially. We didn't build any, because they're not always here. Gotcha. But up here, again, more loot and poison in these boxes, if your players can manage to sneak in here. Yeah, manage to sneak in is the key part, because that Quagloff's right there, outside the door. Yeah. I, I don't think you can sneak up. That's only what? How how many feet would you, you guesstimate is between that Quagloff and there? Like, 20 feet. 20 feet? Yeah, yeah, that's not a very good sneaky sneaky. Yeah, my, Minecraft physics get a little bit odd when you're trying to convert them to D&D, but that's okay. So right here, you have the two Quagoths kind of guarding the lift, which is a wonderfully crafted lift. You can't tell me this isn't a lift. I, I, it looks like a lift, but uh, how does it move? Magic! Uh, there's a nice little hole down there in the, in the webbing. Ah, so it goes down below the webbing. Yeah, and um... Yeah, I, I, you know, I almost had the redstone working, so this thing would actually work as an elevator. I was, you know, just the, almost this close, mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, scrapped the whole thing. Well, why would you do that? Because uh, I'm too stupid for redstone. That's unfortunate. Uh, over here, this is just another elite guard barracks. Gotcha. Same stuff up here. Same loot. There's less, less barracks, though. Yeah, there's just a couple of them up here. I see. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to dark time. It is dark. Uh, over here, you'll find two more drow kind of sitting here, playing some cards. They have a little, you know, watch at the ground below. Over here, regular drow barracks. There's just one little drow boy here. And again, lots of material for the players to steal. Gotcha. So what if you have a bunch of players that just want to steal everything? Well, Could there they... are going to be level one or two here. And there's an entire drow outpost. <laughs> so if they can manage to, they're welcome to. Gotcha. So you, do you think they can physically carry everything? Depends how many players you got. Okay. And how strong they are. I mean, if you have a really strong barbarian at level one, I, I would imagine probably. Okay. Uh, well, then again, there's armor in all of these chests. All the wonderfully made cots, you know. I don't see how the drow could potentially, you know, complain about their living quarters. 
No, they seem great. Shared living space. Oh, hey, a fire. Yeah, the little fire. They got the barrels of food and stuff here. Your players can come to steal their wonderfully made steaks at their tables. I like and it. And so you'll notice that's that's all there is to the outpost. Huh. Yeah, uh, so your only options down are this lift or the much faster and scarier way down. Ah, just jumping. Yeah, so... The webbing is scary, and can potentially go very poorly. I believe players take 10d6 fall damage if they fall all the way from the outpost to the floor. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate, because uh, that's uh, that's death for anybody. Yeah, any level 2 character. Yeah. I do see there's a waterfall, though, so... Yeah, so the water makes it really hard for your players, because, I mean, our first thought was to try to scale down, because, well... We we got into this first fight. Dwarven chick died. We were all pretty injured, and the rest of that looked really scary. Uh huh. Our rogue snuck ahead, stole a little bit more stuff. He uh -huh. got that liquor. Nice. Uh, and then we might have jumped. I see. How many people survived the landing? Everyone, surprisingly. Ah, good, good, good. Because we landed in the water below, but the water holds danger. Oh yes. A gray slime <laughs> awaits those who would fall into the pool. Uh, question. What, what, what color is the slime? The gray slime. So, sorry, the gray ooze. It, it, it's a gray ooze? Yeah, that's a gray ooze. That, that's not gray. I don't know what you're talking about. That's very clearly gray. Ah. That's also gray. That, that, that's also gray. I'm colorblind. That explains a lot. Oh, uh, yeah. So, but down here at the bottom, there's not a whole lot going on. If you go back to the darkness, you can kind of see the lights up above, but not a whole heck of a lot. Uh, they do say that if any player makes a light down here, like a torch, uh -huh. everybody above will see them. But, spoilers, there's probably going to be some fighting going on up there for, for reasons. Okay, okay. But the players have basically three means of escaping this, this tunnel. So they have to come down here to escape. Yes. There's no way to escape from up there. They need to make their way down here to proceed. Give me a shovel, I'm gonna dig up. Um, well, that's not as easy to do in D&D in &D as it is Minecraft. A shovel. I will dig. So, the player's first option up here to the north is, uh, this definitely not meta chest that tells you where you're going. And this one takes you to Menzo Baranzan. And eventually in Blindenstone. Okay. Menzo Benzen is the capital of the drow! Oh! Terrifying. Yeah, not a good place to go. Do not recommend that one. Luckily, we did not go that way. We asked some of the other slaves, kind of asked them, like, Hey, what what's the safest way out of the Underdark? Uh -huh. And uh, they gave us a little bit more uh, help. And we found this place that says it goes to the Dark Lake. Ah. Or eventually south to Gracklestug. Okay, so heading south. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, yeah. And then this last one is actually the, the straight-up south chamber that just straight-up goes to Racklestug. Huh. Okay, okay. So, as you can just kind of see, I really just love this map, because it's just giant stalactite bases. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody saw that. Nobody saw that. Nobody saw that. Okay. Yeah, there's giant stalactites. Yeah, but yeah, just the giant stalactites and up here. I, I Looking at the map, because I, I looked at this map before I had originally played in the campaign. That's that's told the DM ahead of time. But anyway, I just really liked this map, and I thought it'd be a fun one to build, and I appreciate your help with building it all. Ah, uh, yes. I did all of the spider webs and most of the stalactite outside bases. Yeah, there was no way I could design that. I can, uh, I can put down a fire, <laughs> but, uh, actual art is more Sam's forte. Uh, so, I, I mean, it's not art. It was, uh, blocks that look semi-natural. Unfortunately, we did build this before the big cave update where, uh, stalactites and stalagmites were added in. Yeah, well, yeah, <clears throat> yeah well, you know, it'd so, be like that. It'd be like that. But yeah. That's pretty much the whole place. Uh, and this is a 
pretty full session. We barely got through this whole thing in time, and I kind of hope something like this might make it a little easier for your players to kind of uh, understand where they're at. Because uh, I know personally, I know a couple of people in the session did have a hard time understanding giant stalactite bases. <laughs> yeah, that would be hard for me to wrap my head around. Especially in the dark where I can't even see. You just, just fumble into a wall. Yeah. But okay. Anything else you can think of that we should show off? Um, no, I can't think of anything to show off, but where would we find uh, this map if I wanted to use it? Ooh, good question. The links to the downloads will all be in the description below. Gotcha. And How many uh, comments and likes do, do we need to try to get you to build uh, the rest of the maps for this particular uh, module? Too many to count because I'm still playing in it, so I can't read ahead. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I respect my DM too much. Gotcha. So, uh, TBD, guys, on the other mm -hmm. maps. But if there are other maps from other modules that I'm not currently playing in that you guys would like to see, just let us know in the description below and we'll see what we can do. We're not expert builders, but I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty decent. Again, I have no idea what I'm looking at, but... Yeah, but you can kind of figure your way along. Are you sure that's a quaggle? Look. Oh. Hold on. I gotta show Sam what his quag looks like. Look, I... Identical. They're identical. It does not look like a quag no, Look, no, Look closer. Identical. Uh, no. Identical. It does say quag I'll give you that. Uh, I don't think uh, characters in D&D &D typically walk around with name tags on, though. Good ones, too. <laughs> Good ones. I don't know. But thank you all for watching. I'm going to be here for a while. But we'll see you in the next one. This is Sam. And this is Ham. Thanks for watching. Bye.